Many hours have passed for you, only seconds for me. Now I'm going to talk about what I'm going to read coming up. I'm participating in three events this summer that I can remember at the moment. Two of them, I think they all start in June. If not, this is really an, a sneak peek ahead. And maybe, if we get that far, it might even sneak ahead all the way to August. Because what I've done is gone through on my Kindle, and you can see on my apps, I have done collections. Here's all my books in Spanish. I'll never read that many books in Spanish. 62 books. What I did is went through and got uh, a bunch of people's first book in their series free. Um, so maybe I'll find a couple authors in there I can read. Probably a lot that I that I need more to look for. I mean, uh, more experience for. But what should I start with? Well, the big event, I think, uh, is going to be June on the Range. And I am doing a buddy read with my buddy of a book called, what is the name of it? Oh, I have to download it. Oh, he has a better, I'll link to his page. He has a better cover. I just have the Gutenberg cover. Gunman's Reckoning by Max Brand. Uh, I, cho I suggested this for two reasons. It was free, so it didn't really violate my 100-book challenge buying thing. It was free to download on, on Gutenberg. It was uh, by an author that I've never read. I'm pretty sure Faceless hasn't read either. In fact, well, I know it now. Um, <clears throat> and it was also the most popular Max Brand book on there. It's called Gunman, Gunman's Re Reckoning. Most popular meaning it, it was the one that had been downloaded the most times. It's from 2021. I knew all I knew about this author was what I had read in a book last month about really insanely fast writers, and he was one of them who wrote an, at an amazing, prodigious uh, rate. He wrote. He wanted to be a poet. He would get up at four or five in the morning. He would write poetry for four hours. He do according to this book. I'll list the book in the comments because I don't think I'm going to be able to find it in time to make for this video. He um, he would work all morning, four or five hours, and produce like five or six lines of poetry. And then he would have lunch and probably a few cocktails. I don't know about that. And then he would just bang out fiction, westerns mostly, all afternoon under a bunch of different names. Mostly, his most popular name was Max Brand. Uh, let me see if I can dig up that book. Here it is. It was called uh, Writing Secrets of the World's Most Prolific Authors by Sean McLaughlin. I think I talked about this before. Anyway, the first one listed in here. Oh, did I get this wrong again? Frederick Faust. No, Max Brand. Okay, Frederick Faust. His real name is Frederick Faust. Anyway, Max Brand. Uh, so I'm going to read that. There is a couple of side challenges in the June on the Range. I'll list the co-hosts and all that. Um, there's some good videos made by the... The event was created three years ago by Michael K. Vaughn. It's a very popular event. I'm really excited about it because I do like Westerns. I haven't had a chance to read any for a while. Anyway... <clears throat> Let me get back to my Western uh, collection. There's a prompt also on here to read one Zane Grey and one Louis L'Amour. I do have a Zane Grey. I have the most famous one, uh, Riders of the Purple Sage, uh, which I don't know much about either. It's from the same time period. It's another free book. Um, release date. Oh, that's the Gutenberg release date. I don't know. I think it's from like 1912 or something. So I can do that, but I don't have any Louis L'Amour on my Kindle. Not even one I read before that I could reread, which I would because Louis L'Amour is the best. One of the best writers, one of the best fiction writers, popular fiction writers ever. 
Uh, you can pick up any of his Sackett novels or any of those. He's written some books that aren't. He wrote an a amazing book called The Walking Drum, probably one of the first books I read by him, which is, is historical European fiction, not a Western. Uh, so you can't read that for this, but you could you could you could find a Louis L'Amour paperback for a buck on any you know remainders table of any used bookstore, I'm sure. And you can read that and you'd enjoy it. It's just like watching a, a great old movie. He has a bunch of collections of short stories, which I like very much, of course. And he's always in print everywhere. He always will be in print. He's like that, you know, Agatha Christie in that way. It's like he's perennial, perennially popular for good reason. So, unfortunately, I can't read any of that, which is why I'm determined to finish my 100 book challenge this year. So next next year uh, next uh, year of the Western and uh, year of the Western that'd be nice. That's what you should do, Mister Vaughn. Instead of June on the range, do the year of the the year of the instead of the year of the dragon, the year of the stallion or something. We just we read westerns for one year. I know people would participate. Anyway, if you do want a Louis L'Amour, uh, the, my buddy, as I mentioned already, faceless. Book reviews uh, has a bunch of reviews of Louis Lemoore's that he's read recently. So we're going to have fun with that Max Brown book, good or bad or indifferent, I guess. Now, what the reason I originally started, this was the first challenge I heard about when I was starting my channel and the first one I knew I was going to take because I have a ton of Westerns on here that I wanted an excuse to read. Not that I had need an excuse, but works well with my other challenge, my 100 book challenge. Oh, I can just get back to it. I've got seven. This is killing me. This is killing me how many times I have to go into this app and go back to the page I wanted. Your list. I don't want my lists. I want my library and then I want my collections. Okay, so I've got seven of these by Brian Garfield. You see The Last Birds, The Last Hard Men, Manifest Destiny. The Vanquished, Sweeney's Honor. Hopefully this will just open up. None of these are downloaded. Because I don't really read them on my phone. I just do the phone on here for the color. These are from Open Road Media, I believe. Yeah, Open Road. Uh, a few years ago, they did a big... They, when they put, they put a lot of books out at once. And they were doing tons of freebies. And I got all these free. And I never read them. And I forgot I had them, of course. So, Brian Garfield, most famous today for thrillers, especially, I, I suppose a few of them are in print. I mean, now everything's back in print because of Open Road, which, which reprints a lot of uh, old paperback originals. But most uh, known, if he's known at all, for the novel Death Wish, which was made into the movie Death Wish which starred Charles Bronson, which was supposed to star originally Jack Lemmon. So you get an idea of more what the book Death Wish was going to be like before they put Charles Bronson in it and created five, 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 uh, five canon sequels to it. Um, anyway, that's what he's known for, but he did write a lot of Westerns. These guys, like a lot of these guys back then, they wrote everything. You know, he was one of that group with Donald Westlake and uh, Lawrence Block. <clears throat> Lawrence Block's always talking about Death Wish. I think it's the one book that was written by a peer of his that he really wished he'd written. I think he said that in, in, in different places. And Barry Malsberg, they all kind of circled around the Scott Meredith Literary Agency and did work there. I'm not sure about Garfield and the others. I know all work there is as readers and, and, you know, worked in the agency and then did a lot of hack work besides their, their serious work. And, you know, they all lived in New York and they all hang out together and drank together and pumped out genre fiction. M much of it's still read today. So I'm hoping those are good. If they're not, it's okay because I've got, I've, I'll, I'm going to read the Max Brand one first. Actually, there's a story I'm going to read first. Then I, I think I'll try and do Writers of the Purple Sage. Then I've got those. 
And if they're great, maybe I'll blow through them. I'm a little more sanguine about my chances now that I've been through a couple of months of challenges. I realize I'm not going to get as far on the challenges as they want. But here's another book I want to read. Um, this is just the shorty, I think. It's probably like under 10,000 words. Uh, Trail of the Snake by Norval Page. Norval Page, known to some people as Grant Stockwell, the author of almost all of the shadow, uh, the spider pulp novels. I have about a bunch of those to read too at some point, maybe for Garb August. So, and then I looked and he's got a few, I've managed to read a couple other books that he wrote, sort of like these uh, Prester, these uh, historical novels, more like sort of sword and sorcery novels about Prester John that I can't think of the name of right now that I had as paperbacks that are long out of print. And his spider novels are all in print from a small press. Then I got a few other things. Um, I'm going to read this. That's, unfortunately, I've been. this is one that I don't know if I'm going to read or not because I have a feeling just based on what everybody's told me about these series that I'm going to love them. And I'm going to be bummed out that I've only got the first one even though they're all available, there's like 200 of them, 350 each, they're hardly anything. But can't buy any until I read 60 other books. So uh, I do want to read that, and if I like it, maybe it'll give me the incentive to finish my, my challenge fast so, so I can buy some of the others. Then there is some more possibilities that I thought, you know, I don't know if these would count or not. There's a couple books I've always wanted to read that a friend of mine really likes. Um, literary, early American literary fiction uh, by Willa Cather. I think they're set in, I think they're, uh, you know, set on the prairie or something like that. They're probably not technically what people think of as westerns, but and I'm wondering about this one too by Frank Norris, a writer that uh, Steve Vaughn, uh, Steve Donahue hates. I love that movie, the, the, Greed by Von Stroheim, personally directed by, by Von Stroheim, if you look at the credits. That's how his credit reads. Personally directed by Eric Von Stroheim. Fantastic early American uh, silent film. It starts in San Francisco. It's about a dentist, an unlicensed dentist. Ends up going out west for the third and final act. Uh, you know, I don't know how much was changed for the movie. It's, you know, very much the, th the third, probably like the fifth act, the final reel, let's put it that way, of the movie Greed, based on McTeague, takes place in, in definitely cowboy land. I mean, definitely Western tropes, you know, horses, neckerchiefs, sidearms, hats. Another one I might try and read is a book I've had on here for a while. Uh, a, a novel based on a true story. Uh, and I'll talk about this. If I do get around to this, I'll talk about the, this writer, Clifford Irving. Very interesting character. Some of you might recognize. Some of you older people probably know the whole story. Tom Mix and Pancho Villa. I think this was made into a movie with uh, Bruce Willis, I think. That was a big bomb. Um, so Tom, based on a real story of Tom Mix, the cowboy star, western star, uh, going down to Mexico at some point in his life and getting involved with Pancho Villa, I imagine. I think it's based on a true story. I mean, Tom Mix and Pancho Villa were definitely real people. I just don't know if it's the case of an alternate history where, like, what if these two people had met or if they actually met. So that is June on the Range. I'm going to do two other events. Wrath of the Summer of Trek. Hopefully that won't take as long to go through. I do have some stuff for that. I have two Star Trek novels that I can read. I thought I only had one, but I I actually own two. And I made a little uh, file for those, I think. I have a couple that I might reread. I tried, There were two by John John M. Ford. Oh, 
and John M. Fort is a writer who people are very high on now, who was out of print for a while. They brought him back into print. These two books have always stayed in print. How much for Just a Planet and The Final Reflection, uh, which is about, uh, I believe, Klingons or, no, or, or Vulcans playing chess. I tried to read it, couldn't follow it. And then I heard that How Much for Just a Planet was like one of the funniest Star Trek novels. And I, again, I couldn't understand it and didn't see what the joke was. But something about but something about them made me feel like I didn't give them maybe the proper due. So I might try them again. And if I get out of here. But the two that I do have that I can read are... No, I don't want to go to that location. The Wounded Sky by Diane Duane, which I got for like $1.99, I think, at some point. And I think this is one of the most famous ones. I think she's one of the most famous early Star Trek novelists. And this one that I bought because... I've, I'm always looking for a good Star Trek book, and I've really almost never found one. I read The Joy Machine, which was based on a script written by Theodore Sturgeon, novelized by James Gunn, so it had really good pedigree. It's a very dull novel. I don't think James Gunn had ever seen an episode of, of Star Trek, so that was probably a problem with it. And there was a novel written by David Gerald, I think it was on an unproduced script too that I thought would be good, and it wasn't that good. It wasn't related to Trouble Troubles or anything. Uh, but another Star Trek novel he did. David Gerald, famously part of Star Trek, wrote his first published his work, his first professional sale as a science fiction writer, even before any of his novels or anything was the original script for Trouble with Troubles. Then he wrote a book about the making of that episode, and he wrote a book, I think he wrote The World of Star Trek, so he wrote two big early uh, uh, books about Star Trek, and he wrote a ton of his own fiction, and he was a story editor, or on the staff at least, of Next Generation when it came back for the first season. There's a good uh, documentary about that, I'll try and remember to link to it in the comments, about the craziness of the troubles they had writing the first season, the troubles of the writing room where he's interviewed. Um, so that's interesting. But, oh, I just noticed something else about this next Star Trek book. Okay, I'll get that to, it, to that in a minute. But even a lot of the Star Trek books that people say, are, oh, no, this is one of the good ones. This is one of the good ones I've never liked. I, you, there's one called... Uh, uh, Spock Messiah, which was co-written by Theodore R. Cogswell, who is a fantastic uh, galaxy era, 1950s galaxy era stor short story writer. He wrote The Wall Around the World, The Spectre General, some of the greatest stories. I don't know that he'd ever written any novels. And again, it reads like somebody who hadn't watched very much Star Trek. And so that disappointed me too. This one is by Barbara Hamley. It's a name I recognize. I haven't read her, but she's written a lot of uh, mysteries, I believe, after this. This is one of her early books. So I thought she might bring something interesting to it. And it was only a couple of bucks, I think, when I, I remembered it. But I'm just going to say, look what I noticed. I think it's a Western. Look how they're dressed. They're gambling. Look at that, you know, that Miss Kitty from from the Long Branch in, in Dodge City standing behind them. So this might be a crossover book. We'll see. And um, then there's a side mission. I'll save my side mission, but I mean, there's a couple side missions you could do for, for Trek. One would be to read a Trek adjacent book. I had a really big Star Trek year last year. It's one of the reasons I decided to start this channel as I was watching too much TV. I watched they have these lists of, of uh, Star Trek related st 
Star Trek series list of like essential episodes, for example. So, you know, you try and go back and watch these series. There are like 200 episodes or 190 episodes or something. They all ran for seven years back when they were making 26. So you could get these essentials where you watch, uh, where it tells you which the ones you don't want to miss. So I watched a bunch of Voyager, a bunch of Enterprise, a bunch of uh, uh, Deep Space Nine, a bunch of TNG. And I had never watched any of those series before because they would come on the air and the first season would be invariably terrible. So I stopped, I would stop watching them. TNG I picked up again in like the third or fourth season, but I never watched every episode. That just wasn't a thing that was done back then. It's not like today when we're, we're all completists and you just have to see everything. Of course, if you miss an episode of something now, you're going to be lost. You know, I even watched Discovery. I know everybody uh, hates Discovery, but and it's, and I'm not going to blame, I'm not going to, rag on anybody for hating Discovery, but there's some things I like about it, a few things. But they every 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 episode they do uh, previously on Discovery. Like do you think somebody's watching season five, episode ten of Discovery without having watched the other episodes? Of course not. And that's not an episodic show. Uh, that's that's why Strange New Worlds which is about, that's the one with the Pike and Spock Enterprise, is more popular, more likable, because it brings back that 60s, and especially more the 80s sensibility of just, these are weekly adventures uh, of a starship in space, and it's, you can watch one, it's like LA Law or something, you don't have to, you don't have to be an expert to watch one episode of a damn Star Trek show. So, you know, and same with, uh, you know, lower decks or whatever. It's like they pay, they pay off if you watch every week. You know, in terms of like the trivia and all that. But you can just watch one and enjoy it. Um, so, I was watching way too much Star Trek. I thought I gotta stop reading. I gotta stop watching all the Star Trek. And I and I listened to even the the, the oral histories. The like five thousand page. I had audiobooks of like the five thousand page oral histories of all the series that go all the way up through the J.J. Abrams movies, those rotten movies. First one was okay. I didn't see the other two, but I just I'm I'm gonna assert my rights as an old time Trekkie to just assume they're crap. Anyway, um, so that's one of the side missions you could I I could have uh, if I'd had any of that stuff around, I could read some of that. Then the other side. Mission is to read a science book related to Star Trek. And I've got one on my Kindle, which I think is really a good but unexpected pick, I hope. It probably means like 12 other people will have the same idea. But I'll save that as a surprise. And then also Summer of Sport, which I had some trouble with. I picked out a couple great books, and fortunately, I watched enough of the uh, host videos to realize a couple of these are not going to count. People are not gonna, are not going to be very happy if I if I did these. One was about hunting, and one was about or one includes hunting, and one includes and one was a Dick Francis movie, including horse racing and people. And I'm not here to like bum people out on their on their own challenges, so I'm not going to read those books for the challenge. I'll just read them. Uh, at some other point, but I have a couple that I think are going to count, and it, they were hard to find because uh, I don't have a lot of books on sports. I was hoping I had a different one by this author. I didn't. I know this author that I'm about to mention here started out writing school stories, School stories of the type that sort of J.K. Rowling is, uh, in one sense, harking back to, you know, from the earliest parts of the night of the 20th century. Um, you know, I mean, hers she added magic and all that to make it make it a new thing. But you know, there used to be these school stories about boys and their rugby matches and things like that. And I know that this writer wrote a bunch of those before he really found his voice and became the the greatest humor writer the English-speaking world has ever known. But this one also does include some sport, and it's Mike and Smith, which I've never read, by P.G. Woodhouse, also known as Pelham Grimville Woodhouse. And I'm really looking forward to this. Let's see. 
because I read it in the... Okay, so the, see, the earlier book is, is one I would have uh, liked to read more, but I'm going to read this last paragraph here. I must apologize, as I did in the preface to Mike at Ricken, which is a previous book in the series, for all the cricket in this book. It was unavoidable. There is, however, not quite so much of it this time. So that implies there's some, and that's enough cricket for me to get to use it for the challenge. There's another book, uh, which is one of those public school stories I told you about by someone else. I don't know why I have this on there. Probably if uh, might have deleted it if, if it wasn't for the challenge. So it's going to be quite an adventure. But I wonder if any of my, my British friends will have heard of this writer. Anyway, Acton's Feud, a public school story by Frederick Swainson. Um, I don't know if there's sport in this or not. Oh, I think there probably is. Well, it's hard to say. Chapter 1 is called The Foul. Chapter 2 is called The Penalty. Uh, let's see if there's anything about runs or at bats or anything. Uh, it's like there's some gambling stuff in here, too. Let's see if I can get to that. Oh. Shannon, <clears throat> chapter one, the foul. Shannon, the old blue, had brought down a rattling 11, two internationals among them, to give the school the first of its annual soccer matches. Soccer, in parentheses, with a K. Probably when it was a, a I imagine, maybe I'll find out, I imagine the name soccer came about to distinguish it to distinguish uh, football from rugby football, I guess. And maybe they used to spell it that way. So there's another uh, sport novel. It's going to be quite a sporty summer for me. So I'll prob I'm going to do the Buddy Read. We're going to try and release our Buddy Reads of the Max Brown book. Hope it goes well. Um, now I've heard some other things about Max Brown, the author, but it doesn't matter. Um, we're going to release that on the 6th. I think we're going to try and release ours at the same time so we don't know what the other is saying. You know, that's kind of how people do buddy reads, it seems like. Then I've got a couple others I might try. Now, uh, Elvis, uh, sorry, Mark. Mark from Book Time with Elvis, who created a Summer Sport, when he sort of talked through in his original video, I'll try and remember to re link to his original video too. And if I miss any of the hosts for uh, Summer Sport, I apologize in advance. I know some hosts were added. I'll try and find the most recent list of hostings, hosts that I can. But he mentioned, you know, you know, different ways to look at it. He mentioned one of his favorite books, one of my favorite books, t uh, Three Men in a Boat. Almost called it Two Men in a Boat, which I guess is the shortened version. Three Men in a Boat. You know, because they're on a sporting outing. So I'm wondering if this will count. I don't know. I haven't decided yet. Maybe I'll read it and try. This is another book I have had for a while. Victor Canning. Same era. Mr. Finchley Discovers His England. This is a series. Uh, Mr. Finchley books. Looks like he's on a bicycle tour. Looks like he's some kind of city guy, you know, with his bowler hat and everything. Uh, Stockbroker or whatever who decides to go on the road and discover his own city of bicycling, of fish and wisdom. I hope that people aren't going to get upset about fishing. Uh, I won't worry about it. Anyway, my, that might count too. So those are my three challenges that I know I'm doing. Summer of the Wrath of the Summer of Trek, Summer of Sport, and... June on the range. And there's one more, Garb August. And I swear that I started this video so that I could talk about Garb August because I mentioned, because I just seen Raynor's, uh, Raynor Reed's video where she opened up a package she got from one of her buddies uh, on another channel, who sent her all this awesome stuff for Garb August. And I wanted to share my Garb August stuff. But this has gone on long enough, so that will have to wait 
Stay tuned sometime this summer for my Garb August picks and their doozies.